Respected brothers, just as we speak, uh, Donald Trump is being inaugurated as President of the United States. Um, now, obviously all of us know that this man was elected on uh, a mandate that pretty much normalized racism and Islamophobia. Um, you know, he spewed hatred in his campaign speeches, not just against Muslims, but against Mexicans. And as his campaign gathered pace, um, uh, the, the, the American right wing grew strong, uh, reared its ugly head, and there has been a rise in racist attacks and in Islamophobic attacks and so on, so on and so forth. In a recent meeting that I was sitting in, um, uh, the local police borough commander was giving a report on hate crime um, and the various statistics, uh, particularly for, for this area, for Tower Hamlets. And the statistics showed here as well that when Brexit happened, there was uh, a spike in uh, hate crime. So hate crime is like it covers uh, racist attacks, Islamophobic at attacks, um, or incidents, if you like, um, anti-Semitic incidents, uh, and things like that. And whenever these types of things happen, whenever there is some sort of strong um, activity or, or a strong uh, event or some sort of strong success on the right, um, you end with, among, among right-wing people, we're going to end up with um, Muslims and other minorities uh, becoming victims of, uh, of hate crime. This is most likely going to continue. Now with Trump as president, chances are that um, the European far-right will rise and become stronger. So, what to do uh, in the face of all of this? So, of course, um, one of the things that we in Britain mustn't do is uh, suffer in silence. Those days are gone. Uh, when I was growing up in the 80s, um, you know, people didn't think that anything would happen if they, rep if they reported um, a racist attack. Uh, we were, uh, as children even, you know, regularly uh, racially abused and sworn at and so forth. And, you know, we, nobody bothered to do anything about it. You just went home, you know, and just did sabr, basically. But nowadays, um, you know, the one, uh, one of the good things, alhamdulillah, is that the authorities are set up to deal with this as a separate crime, right? So if, if, there, if somebody is being attacked because they're a Muslim or because they're brown-skinned or, or whatever it is, or because they're a migrant, then this is, a, this is a specific category of crime that has to be reported. And the way things work is that unless things get reported, you know, reporting something doesn't mean that you're going to, some sort of justice is going to be done for you and you're going to feel better um, about the abuse that somebody threw at you on the bus. But reporting it means that it gets registered as an incident. And the more incidents get registered, the more incidents get registered, the more it comes to the knowledge of the authorities, to the knowledge of the police that this is on the rise. So for example, um, sometimes a particular crime can appear to be a lot higher in 2016 than it was in 2015, right? Sometimes that's because there was indeed more crime, but sometimes it's just because people are reporting it more. And therefore the statistics show that the crime is on the increase. And when the statistics show that the crime is on the increase, the police are forced to try to do something about it. Right? So, 
you know, there's been like in where I live in my building, you know, there's been some theft. You know, so bikes have been stolen, my son's bike got stolen, and things like that have happened. And everybody just thought, you know what, the security cameras don't work. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna catch anyone. There were like lots and lots of incidents. And then yesterday, I met a police officer, and she said to me, "Well, only four have been reported." So as far as we're concerned, officially, you know, it's like we'll compare it with another building that's also reported for and we'll think this is normal. But if you guys think that this is a massive, you know, upward spike, like there's been a massive increase in your experience of theft and antisocial behavior, then, you, then it has to look like a massive increase on the police's records for them to do something about it. Okay? So I, I was advised by this police officer and then in the meeting as well that the one thing that communities often fail to do and then they complain our oh, police doesn't do anything. One thing that communities often fail to do is they think that when a small incident, they think that I haven't been hurt badly. Oh, it's okay, they only swore at me, right? And they don't report things. And that results in j the whole thing just remaining, you know, it, it's as if the incident didn't happen. As far as the authorities are concerned, as far as doing something about it, it's as if the incident hasn't happened. So, no matter how difficult it is, if it's an emergency, you have to call 999, but if it's not an emergency, somebody's done something, you've moved on, you're safe, you go home, you call 101, and you let them know, so that it gets registered as in the correct category, as a hate crime, as an Islamophobic crime, <laughs> as a racist crime, as a racist incident, and so forth. This is very, very important. And I'm telling you this because I'm the same, you know? So my son's bike got stolen, I didn't report it. Because I thought, oh, we're not going to catch him. Right? But what we have to understand as a whole community is, it's not always about catching the criminal. It's not always about catching the criminal. It's about, it's about getting a true reflection of how bad things are, so that preventative measures can be taken. Right? If you go to your local council and you say, why doesn't the police do more, more about, Islamopho about Islamophobia? Or why doesn't the police do more, more about r racism? The council will go to the police and the, poli the borough commander will show the statistics and say, well, it, there, there isn't a major concern. <laughs> For us to justify putting more officers on the, on the streets or going to a particular, a particular hotspot for patrols and so forth, we need data, we need information, we need reports. Right? So this is one thing I wanted to say. Um, and then of course, you know, always be vigilant, always be careful, you know, make sure children and women are protected and, you know, people are a bit more cautious you know, about how they're going about things. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, and today time is short because we started late, is as a community, you know, this, this, this hall, right, represents, you know, the people in this room represent every skin color, right? Go to any masjid in Tower Hamlet in London and you will see people of all colors and races performing Jumu'ah. Islam is absolutely 100% multicultural, multi-ethnic, right? If anybody can show the world how race doesn't matter, right? If anyone can show the world how skin color doesn't matter, if anyone can show the world how um, no matter uh, no matter who you are and what your background is, you know, you're same, you're the same before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That um, a dark skinned person will treat a, a white skinned person as their brother, truly from the heart, right? And a white skinned brother will treat um, a brown skinned brother as, uh, uh, as their brother, right? Truly from the heart. Then it's this community. We're the ones that can show this, right? If we want to combat racism from the outside, then we have to be able to show harmony on the inside. We have to be able to show unity and harmony on the inside. And unfortunately, sometimes we fail here. We fail here because we also suffer from racism among ourselves. Among ourselves. Among ourselves, there is still the jahiliyyah of racism. Even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know, he wiped it out and he taught us. The Prophet 
taught us through the Quran and in his own words um, about he taught us that in akramakum indallahi atqakum that the most noble among you is the most pious among you he taught us he taught us that uh, إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا That, uh, O mankind, we created you from a man and a woman. Meaning that you have common ancestry. Color doesn't matter. Your blood is the same. Right? Um, and we made you into tribes um, and nations so that you may recognize one another. Right? This is the reason for differences. This is an important principle. It is an important principle. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala has revealed that that you must be humble with one another. Inna Allah awha ila an tawadhu that you must be humble with one another, so that one is does not show pride over another. Hatta la yafkhara ahadun ala ahadin, wa la yabghi ahadun ala ahad, and so that. One person does not show, does not in, transgress over another person in any way. And this pride comes from either one's own perception, because of one's own understanding that, that they are superior over another person because they come from a particular tribe, because they come from a particular class, because they are a particular skin color, because they do a particular type of job. Because they have a certain amount of money. This is where this fakhr comes from. This is where this, uh, this prejudicial pride, this pride that results in looking down upon another person um, comes from. And then in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that anybody who calls to asabiyyah, who calls to racism or any form of prejudice, anybody who fights on the basis of racism or on the basis of any form of prejudice, and anybody who dies on racism and for any form of prejudice is not from among us. Is not from among us. And the reason why I'm saying this in the context of racism is because we have to admit that we suffer from it ourselves. And if we, as, a, as living in a community where we may suffer, we may suffer some prejudice as a result of our religion and as a result of our race because we're, di we're multi, very, very multi-ethnic. But yet we cannot demonstrate that we have already as a community risen above prejudice and above discrimination and we treat, treat one another equally. Then you can say that this is a type, it's a kind of adab. It's a kind of adab and we, we, we deserve no better. And if anything, it is our discourse. It is the fact that you know people who might be right-wing in their mentality, who might be racist, see how we live in harmony. Because we are Muslims who are brothers to one another. When they see how we, for us, color doesn't matter. Because on one saf in the masjid, there is every color on the spectrum, on the racial spectrum. When, when they see that there is um, intermarriage is possible among us. Intermarriage is possible among us. When they see that we don't fight each other and we don't get into conflict on the basis of, of uh, Bengali and Somali and Pakistani and Arab and so forth, right? But rather these things do not matter. When they see that, then they see a better example. Then we show a greater set of values and people think, well, this is, this is how one has to be. This is how people have to be. But we can't demonstrate that if we suffer from the same diseases. So, two things. Firstly, we have to be vigilant. We have to anticipate that these things are going to happen and make sure that we are vigilant, our children are vigilant, and our women are vigilant. And secondly, we have to work to overcome the problem of racism and prejudice and discrimination among ourselves as a community. Because we all know, we all know that this problem exists. It is universal. But we have the most powerful, the strongest, the most, the clearest and the most absolute teachings with regards to this in the Quran and in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's words, right? And the beauty of it is that these are teachings that we all agree on. That we all agree on. You know, out there, left-wing ideology has become a religion in itself. 
People operate based on that. Right-wing ideology has become a religion in and of itself. People operate on the basis of that. And that impacts upon our behavior. Whereas, alhamdulillah, our behavior as Muslims is impacted by the teachings of the Qur'an. Our behavior is impacted by the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And when it comes to racism and prejudice, we have to demonstrate that by being the better people, by showing that it does not affect us and we are better for that. And if the world doesn't allow itself to be affected by prejudice based on race and color and creed, then the world will be a better place, just like the Muslim community is a good place.